or to make election more accessible for persons with disabilities. Can we have the slide presentation of Ms. Suyon Kim? Yeah. You can, maybe you want to introduce also yourself, maybe speak. Uh, yeah. Where we wait? Uh -huh. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sushian Kim from South Korea. Um, I have to say that I'm very honored to be here uh, to this good chance to share the ideas and experiences with all of you in this great agenda conference. Um, okay, yeah, 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 okay. And um, I know today's topic is about how to get an, uh, how to provide accessibility to the voters with, uh, with disabilities. And I know that my duty here is to pro, uh, introduce, introduce the best examples for better access to elections for persons with disabilities. Uh, and I know that I uh, also can hear many good examples of other countries, so I think this will be a very good chance to share the information. Okay, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, share the information together. Okay, okay, okay yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in order to guarantee the accessibility in the elections for voters with disabilities, two concepts are very important, I think. Uh, one of them is to guarantee access to information, and also the other one is to, get, uh, to guarantee, uh, to provide the conven conveniences to get access to the polling station. In here, I think it would be better to introduce some election system of my country. We adopted a universal and equal and direct and secret voting system. So all the Koreans who are 19 years old and more uh, can participate in the elections. And also basically they have to enter the polling booth by themselves and cast the vote alone. Uh, and the and the constitutional law of Korea also provides those uh, voting principles. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, is this maybe it is set like automatically, so it specializes on what? Maybe the committee can back uh, the slide from the beginning because it's too fast, you know. Maybe the committee can change the slides while, uh, when, miss, uh, when it's asked to change. So please don't change the slide until, she, uh, until the speaker explains. So from the beginning. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and the next, I already explained this, so yeah. next please. Okay, here, okay. Here. Um, Slow down. And today's topic is to introduce how to include the voters with disabilities, and there are two main categories to think over to include voters with disabilities. And the first one, the first one is to guarantee the right to elect electoral information, and second one is the to, get an, to provide the, the, uh, to guarantee the right of access to the polling stations. Um, okay, so ne next slide please. So now I, now I wanna introduce what we do to provide a reasonable ac accommodation during the election, election period. Uh, so the first one, uh, I wanna explain how we, uh, what we do to guarantee the right to electoral information to voters with some disabilities. Um, and the voters should know the information about the candidates and their pledges. So 
this access to the information is so hard to achieve the voters with disabilities. Uh, because the campaign brochures made by candidates is uh, one of the very important election campaign method, but the pamphlets and leaflets are written languages, so uh, like uh, voters with uh, visual disabilities uh, have uh, some difficulty understanding them. Um, uh, so, according to our election law provides that the candidates may provide a braille version of campaign brochures. So, uh, the, uh, the candidate can provide the braille version, version of a ca campaign brochure and also the government will pay for the cost of the, uh, for that pamphlet. Even though basically the candidate have to pay the cost uh, with regard to uh, their election campaigning, but in, with regard to, to this brave version of the uh, campaign brochures, the government pay the cost. Um, okay, and also um, we think even though the the braille language is very uh, useful to the voters with the visual disabilities, also they can understand it better if uh, we use, if we provide some elect electoral information with the voice. So we, um, election commission um, provide, uh, distributed a compact disc, uh, introducing some voting guide to the voters with visual disability for them to be understand better. And also we provide to, a dimensional barcode. There is a QR code uh, which you can hear the voice by scanning with a smartphone. So as you might guess, we try to utilize uh, some modern technology such as a QR code, some applications and smartphones to, uh, for the voters with um, disabilities to understand this better. Okay, the next slide please. Um, And also, these days, um, the, the debate and the discussions among candidates on the TV is very important. So a media election campaign is really important, but the deaf, deaf voters cannot hear what they are saying. So according to the election, according to the election law, the broadcasting company may provide the subtitles or the sign language interpretation when they broad, broadcast the debates among the candidates. Mm. Okay, so next, next slide please. So you can see the photos, so this is Korean languages, so, but you can see this is uh, like this braille version of a voting guide, the first one, and the second one is a QR code. So if you scan that QR code with the smartphone, they can hear the, vo the voice, uh, so they can understand better. And the, the last one is also, like a vo uh, voting guide, um, the CD, compact disc. So if they play the CD, they can hear uh, that voting guide. Okay, the next slide, please. And also you can see the data. Here is the data. So uh, there is the elect types of elections. So there are there were like national assembly members election and the local elections and also the presidential elections and the local elections. So you can see the uh, that is the um, the first unit is the one Korean one. So the government to uh, paid the cost uh, that uh, number of money uh, and also we. Um, provide some promise booklets, uh, candidates, candidate promise booklets with a uh, braille uh, version. So you can see the data. Okay, next slide, please. And also you can see the static uh, data here with regard to the voice's compact, compact CD and uh, compact disc and the voice, uh, QR code. Okay, okay, the next slide, please. And the second one is about to how to guarantee the access to the polling station. Even though the, the voters with disabilities can understand the information, of, uh, but they, if they, 
they need to go to the polling station and cast a vote there to make their voice heard. So, um, okay, uh, but if the conveniences are not provided, the voters, the voters with disabilities, this is also a very big barrier to the voters. So, um, for the voters to cast, cast the vote easily, we provide um, uh, lots of uh, devices. So, um, but first, basically, the voters should go to the polling station and they have to cast the vote there. But if they have some disabilities, they cannot move by themselves. And if they just want to cast the vote uh, at their residence, they can apply for the residence voting and they can cast the vote at, at their residence. And also, second, um, uh, some, uh, uh, the voters with some visual disability uh, want to cast a vote in the polling booth. They need some uh, device uh, like uh, brave uh, voting aids in the polling station because in order to cast the vote by themselves. Okay, and also sometimes um, uh, we we. Um, if the voters with some visual disability want to cast a vote in the polling station, they can accompany two others they designate, so they can get help from them. But sometimes people just want to cast a vote by themselves because this is a secret voting, so they want to show their uh, political preferences to other people. So in the case, um, yeah, so, um, so in the case we, uh, for the case we, we uh, provide the free, uh, the, that free voting aids, so they can choose, they can just go into the polling booth by themselves and or they can go into, they, they can enter the polling booth uh, with the other two people they designated. Okay. Mm. okay, next slide please. And also, um, there are some convenience, conveniences for the immobile e voters. So we provide the wheelchairs and assistance for them to get to the polling station if they uh, ask the National Election Commission to provide them. And also we try to install as many polling stations as possible on the ground level. So we install, and also we install the temporary ramp and for, uh, for the voters on wheelchairs to get to the entrance of the polling station if necessary. And also we install the polling booths which are tall and wide, specially designed for, uh, like, uh, for the voters uh, on wheelchairs. So next slide, please. So you can see the photos here. So the first photo is uh, there is a car with the wheelchair lift and there is assistant. So they uh, help them with the riding uh, the car and they can go to the polling station. Okay, and also you can, the first one is the specially designed uh, polling booths. So the voters with the wheelchair, uh, on the wheelchairs, can go into the polling booths, so th that is the specially designed polling booth. Okay. And okay. Yes, and also, uh, you can see the data here. So this is the residence voting. So I said that basically, people should go to the polling booths, but some people with disabilities can apply for the residence voting. So you can see how many voters uh, cast the vote in their residence. So you can also, you, you can see how many people use the car and assistance and also how many level, how, how many percentage of the uh, polling station is uh, located on the ground level. You can see the data, so. Okay, so, okay. so, uh, so far I explained what kind of devices and what kind of system we implemented so, uh, so far now. But I wanna uh, explain like the barriers to the implementation. The, so next slide, please. Um, 
Okay, so even though we have enacted the law providing easy access to information, uh, such as providing the Braille version and the sign language, not so many voters have a knowledge about those special languages. Probably we do not provide enough education and we do not have enough infrastructure to let them learn those languages. So that is one of the actually barrier. And uh, even though we need some print stores, like a copy shops, to manufacture manufacture those uh, brave version of pamphlet, but we do not have enough stores to print them in such a short time. So that's also uh, one of the barriers to that implementation. Okay, um, and also, actually, uh, as I just explained this so far, we we think we have a lots of or lots of devices, and we have a system to include the, uh, the voters with disabilities better. And we wanted to uh, uh, disse disseminate the information to uh, the voters with disabilities. So I mean, so we want to let them know what kind of devices we have, but it is so hard to let them know that. So we usually, we election commission. Uh, produces some press release, and also we, uh, we, when we have the interview with the media, we explain always, uh, we try to uh, explain what kind of devices we have for the voters with uh, disabilities. Okay, the next slide, please. Um, okay, um, so now here, okay, this is good. Uh, I want to explain new devices uh, to include better. So the first one is the sometimes it is it's some kind of delicate uh, delicate matter. But sometimes the uh, voters with disabilities think a distinction is also discrimination. So they really sometimes some voters does not uh, do not want to uh, use the specially designed polling booth. They just want to cast the vote in the general polling booth. So. Uh, we try to uh, make the polling booth as similar as the general polling booth. And also, um, the play version and sign language is uh, 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 may be provided, but that is not mandatory. So um, uh, we try to amend the election law to provide, um, to make that sign language program is mandatory. And also, we try to make uh, more advanced voting aids a, uh, voting devices. Uh, so, yeah, we tried to uh, make a new system and we also try to include the voters with disabilities better. Okay, this is what I prefer to put today's uh, presentation and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ms. Su Yun Kim, for your very interesting uh, presentation. Um, may I? make a little summary of your presentation that the National Election Commission of South Korea has succeeded in working on improving accessible election for people with disabilities. And the main focus of uh, National Election Commission South Korea is how to provide information of election is more accessible mm -hmm. for persons with disabilities by providing braille, yeah, right. yes, and uh, the sign subtitles, mm -hmm. sign languages, so the information can also reach uh, persons with disabilities. And also how to provide assistance for persons with disabilities in the polling stations. Mm -hmm. So while the information is still fresh, so I will open the floor for two questions for Ms. Su Yeon Kim. Anyone would like to ask something? Yes. Ms. Uh, Mr. Nguyen Saurat from CDPO Cambodia. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, you Kim, thanks for your giving me floor. I'm Saurat from Cambodian Disabled People Organization. I feel very interesting of uh, you mentioned disability list or disability data are really mentioned in uh, during the election of Korea. So could you share us the experience, how could you uh, justify the list or the name of person with disability in the list of voter registration? Do you mean like, is it like mainstreaming inclusion or that you got separate list of person with disability during the election? 
uh, assuming you want to know how many percentage yeah yeah the my my question about the, the technical how could we encourage uh, let's say the monitoring body of the election to include the the, the number of person with disability in the election or in the registration process uh, is it uh, can I the big you? problem in Asia is that in Southeast Asia, we, we found out most country we cannot find the data of person with, dis with disability go to vote. Even Cambodian, Philippines, like Indonesia, this morning we heard a lot of country cannot put uh, disability in the, in the list of registration or voter list. Uh -huh. So is there any advice on that case to us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, um, yeah, uh, basically, a voter reg registration is by authority. So, uh, the head of the local government will make the voter registration. So, uh, the, even the voters with, with disabilities do not have to apply for the registration. They just get uh, the voting rights. And uh, you mean how, to, how we get the data? So, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we have the law like uh, welfare and um, like, 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 um, like people with the disabilities and welfare act. So according to the law, the, the some uh, people with some disability uh, have to register to get some benefit from the government. So they can, uh, we can figure out the data from from. Uh, According to the law, yeah. So we use the data. Okay. Is is, is this basically to you? Okay. One more question, maybe, from the floor. Before we move on to our next speaker. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So next uh, speaker is Mr. Arif Budiman, the member of Indonesia Election Commission. So, yeah, the member of Indonesia Commission. Time is yours. Okay. Uh, terima kasih, Bu Yustisya. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at this time. I will explain what is the role of KPU in the pre-electoral, during the electoral and post-electoral process. Uh, next. Uh, this is our regulations based on the Constitution, law number two, uh, law number 15, law number eight, and law number 42. This all uh, regulate about the elections, local election, presidential election, and legislative elections. Next. This is our elections since 2004, 2009, and our last election in 2014. Next. Okay. Uh, next. Yeah, uh, we have uh, our first election in 1955. And up to now, we already held uh, 11 times elections with a uh, different system since uh, 1955. Next. Uh, this is our voter participation in legislative election. You can see the data and also you can copy uh, the presentation from the committee. Next, this is the result. Our last election in 2014, we have uh, 12 national parties and three local parties. Next, this is the comparison. 
between election 2004, 2009, and 2014. Number of political parties, number of voters, turnout, and polling places. Uh, we have more than 500,000 polling stations. Next. This is our voter participation in presidential elections. Our last election is presidential election, and we have 190 million footer registered. 188 in Indonesia, and more than 2 million overseas. Next. And this is the presidential election results. We have two uh, candidates. Uh, they only have 7% difference. Next. Uh, this is the comparison of presidential elections. Uh, 2004, we have five pairs or five candidates, and we must finish it in two rounds. 2009, we have three candidates, and we finish it in one round. And 2004, we finish it in one round. Total footers, and then turnout percent, and total polling places at the presidential elections. Next. Approach to inclusions. Oops. Accessible elections. Next. Uh, at the pre-electoral process, when we uh, make regulations, we also involve uh, DPO. We invite PPU Apencha. Yeah. We asking them to give us some informations and anything to make our regulation become better than our last regulations. We also have an MOU with PPU Apencha. Next. Uh, this is our pre-electoral uh, process. Next. At the, uh, during the electoral, we also had a lot of activities involving uh, DPOs. While our previous elections, we only have a lot, we, we have a lot of activities that put uh, EMB as the main subject. They do a lot of things, they come to the DPOs, they come to many places, but we as a subject, we do it anything more than uh, the DPOs. And in our last uh, election, not only us doing uh, socialization, but we together with the DPOs uh, doing socialization. And in our last election, we have, uh, we have a teamwork we call relasi, relawan demokrasi. What do we call relawan demokrasi? Uh, ah, democracy volunteers. In its uh, cities, in its municipalities, we recruit uh, about 15 persons, and uh, those 15 persons consist of somebody from a uh, religious local leader, and then academia, um, and also uh, uh, somebody from DPOs. So 
they are not the only target for the socialization, but they working together with us as a volunteers, as a, what do we call it? as a agent, as, a, as an agent. We are doing socialization together with them. Next. Uh, during the electoral process, um, we also uh, asking for our lower or lowest uh, staff uh, doing anything based on the regulation, including when they build a pooling stations, they must uh, suitable for or accessible for disabilities. Uh, as our chairman uh, explained at the beginning of the sessions, uh, daerahnya harus datar, tidak berbukit-bukit. Ah, ya, seperti itu. Tidak berada di areal yang licin sehingga membuat orang jatuh. Ah, gitu ya. uh, this all the explanations. Next. Conclusions, footers with disabilities are one element of footers that determine the future of the nations. They are a very important part of our future. KPU trying to educate and motivate footers with disabilities to get their right in election and democracy. In order, operation of elections that can be accessed by disabled. KPU will increase the relationship with group of disabilities to make the regulations, technical guidelines, communication and socialization that involving disabled element. And during the uh, electoral process, we also produce a kind of template for uh, the blind uh, putters. This is for the senators this one and this one for the presidential elections because we only have two uh, candidates next uh, this is during the electoral process we have a pre presidential uh, debate can you see at, at the box uh, at the right our left corner, we are, what do you call it? Somebody, yeah, ah, language interpreters. Next. Ah, we also uh, have a publication. We made uh, advertising in many medias, radios, television, newspaper, magazines, with this uh, kind of pictures. Next. Uh, we are doing a kind of simulations with the disabilities. Next. Uh, we also produce a published booklet, brochures. Next. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pak Arif, for your very interesting also presentation. <laughs> Let me summarize before I open the floor for the question and answer session. So as Pak Arif was explaining, the regulation of accessible election is still, is still being perfected by the KPU of Indonesia to make election more accessible for persons with disabilities. Uh, secondly, in terms of accessibility, there are many improvements in Indonesia from election from the electoral cycle conducted in 2009 and 2014. Yeah? Uh, and now KPU and DPOs or PVDs, uh, persons with disabilities, are working together for improving accessible election in Indonesia. So now I will open the floor for two questions. Anyone?
Yeah, okay. it means everything is clear, yeah, Pak Arif. Okay, so we move on to uh, our next uh, speaker, Mr. René Vergara Sarmiento, but can oh. we change the seat because it's too far for, here, for him to see the slides. Mr. Sarmiento, the floor is yours. Before anything else, may I uh, greet the participants and the organizers of this regional dialogue. And uh, may I also congratulate Agenda for this very colorful materials, very informative and very impressive uh, materials that we received this morning. Congratulations and cheers to our agenda. My topic is rights-based inclusive elections for PWD in the Philippines from dream to reality. The question is when did it begin? When did it begin? It all started with the clamor that was joyful, that was hopeful, that was inspiring, coming from persons with disabilities for electoral empowerment, for inclusive elections under Article 29 of the CRPD. Now, joining this very loud clamor where other vulnerable sectors like detainees, indigenous peoples, displaced persons, and elderly, along with first-time voters. The clamor was so irresistible, was so loud, so that it bore fruit because on September 17, 2008, the Commission on Elections, the Commission on Human Rights, the IFES, always, the IFES is always there, and several NGOs had the National Consultation Summit, followed by the formation of a technical working group to study the issues concerning rights to suffrage of PWDs and other vulnerable sectors. Libertas at the time was headed by Commissioner Kia, who is now with us, from NGO to government. Also, Carmen Subiaga was there from NGO to NCGA. What a great transition from NGO to government. So from June to September 2009, Comelec conducted six regional consultations all over the country to address electoral participation of the PWDs and other vulnerable sectors in the 2010 national elections. Now, PWD's aspiration or dream for inclusive elections received a big boost when the interagency and NGO network on empowering PWDs, a model, was formed on February 17, 2011. The COMELEC, three other government agencies, and seven NGOs that include the IFES formed the nucleus of this new organization. And work followed. We pursued what we call the dirty hands and dirty feet approach. The interagency and NGO network, after several meetings, plunged into electoral activities, like one holding a national PWD registration week should be week. Two, establishing 
satellite registration sites, in shopping malls, so many shopping malls. And third, creating and distributing educational materials like booklets, videos, and posters. The interagency and NGO network also helped in policy making. So they were active in policy making, these NGOs, because we have lawyers like uh, Attorney Gia. Law making reform initiatives and accessibility survey. And what were these policy making, law making activities? Because the resolutions passed by Comelec have the effect of law. It is a law that has to be followed. That's the nature of a, our Comelec. We have judicial function, we have law making function, we have executive function. One is adoption and promulgation of Comelec Resolution Number 9220, Guidelines for Registration of Persons with Disabilities. Imagine NGOs participating in policymaking and uh, lawmaking reform initiatives. The purpose of these guidelines is to identify the nature of disability and to find out the kind of assistance that they would need. Number two is the adoption and promulgation of Comelec Resolution Number 9485, which provides for rules and regulations for voting of persons with disabilities and for the establishment of accessible polling places in connection with the May 13, 2013 national and local elections. Third, adoption and promulgation of Comelec Resolution Number 9797 provides for establishing accessible polling places for persons with disabilities and senior citizens in pre-identified Schumart malls, shopping malls, to serve as pilot test areas. And number four, this one is very important. Assisting Congress meaning the interagency assisted Congress in the drafting of a law. If you examine RA number 10366, you will find out one, accessible polling places, sensitivity training, assistance to PWDs and registration, assistance to PWDs in voting, and this law recognizes the role of civil society organizations you will find in the law, okay, highlighted in the law, is the role of civil society organization. Those who crafted this uh, law were members of the interagency and NGO network to empower PWDs. It's now a law and it provides that the COMELEC shall establish precincts assigned to accessible polling places exclusively for persons with disabilities and senior citizens. Next, the adoption and promulgation of Comelec Resolution 9763. Now, now this now implements Republic Act number 10366 that I have mentioned. Number six, conducting a preliminary accessibility survey and a public elementary school preparatory to the 2013 elections. Now, during the May 13, 2013 elections, the interagency and NGO network helped in the establishment of pilot accessible polling places in two voting centers in Dasmarina City, Cavite. Now, our aim is to multiply to expand these accessible polling places in the forthcoming 2016 elections. Finally, the finally, <laughs> because Virginia is here, the brains behind this index tool. The, the, the previous one, the previous slide, 
The Interagency and NGO Network assisted IFES Agenda Election Access Index Team, headed by Virginia Atkinson, in testing the Election Access Index Tool, a tool to find out whether the Commission and political parties are PW-friendly and making recommendations to make these institutions, these uh, political parties, to be PWD-friendly. So, by way of conclusion, sir, of course there are difficulties, of course there are barriers, but the successes of the interagency an NGO network gave hope to the forbearance of inclusive and empowering initiatives for the PWDs in the forthcoming 2016 national elections and onwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sarmiento, for being on time in your presentation. So from what Mr. Sarmiento has explained, we know that EMBs cannot work alone in making accessible election. EMB, EMB must work with NGOs and GSOs to, make, uh, to achieve a right-based election. And also EMBs need NGO and GSO to work toward inclusive participation in election. So if anyone has a question for Mr. Sarmiento, we open for two questions. Is it very clear already? Okay, one question for from, please state your name. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the efforts of uh, former Commissioner Sarmiento for spearheading all of this initiative because uh, he was the authority during that time and it won't happen if uh, no government official with such passion and commitment uh, would, be, uh, would not be there. So I really being uh, there for, uh, from the beginning and until he exited and still, be, and still uh, uh, involved, I would like to give him the best acknowledgement from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for your acknowledgement for Mr. Sarmiento, yes. I know that he is a very kind and dedicated man. <laughs> and uh, anyone wants to ask some question, maybe from that group? The young voice? Okay. So, okay. So I will ask the question with Indonesian. Uh, I am from Timor Leste. Mau tanya untuk pemilihan yang successful dengan kerjasama antara uh, elek sembari dengan NGO. Uh, tentu saja ada hal yang bisa dilakukan oleh NGO dan tidak bisa uh, mengambil bagi uh, ahli apa yang bisa dilakukan oleh uh, institusi, uh, institusi elek sembari. Sejauh mana NGO punya peran dalam mensukseskan sebuah pemilu? Apa yang bisa dilakukan oleh mereka dan apa yang tidak bisa dilakukan oleh mereka? So the question is, how far was the contribution of the NGOs in these inclusive elections? I give a salute to the NGOs. I pay a tribute to the NGOs for their vast contribution, for their creativity, commitment, passion, dedication, 
every possible good words. We have this interagency because of them, not because of the Commission on Elections, but because of the non-governmental organization. I think without the passion of Commissioner Guia, Commissioner Carmen, now of NCDA, of May Butoy, of IFES, and of IFES itself, I think this cannot be made possible. That's why the law, the Republic Act 10366, recognizes it's a law passed by Congress that for the first time gives a recognition to NGOs for its work in inclusive uh, reform activities. Now, how did we harmonize our efforts, efforts of government and efforts of government? We have to expand our understanding also. We have to be patient listening to them. We have to make them friends. I think what is important in the relationship is friendship. It's touching the hearts of each one. Because there, yes, laws will be there. Policies will be there. But unless you energize, you, you inspire each one of us, NGOs and government, we will not work together. As a matter of fact, the initial response of uh, my colleagues in the Comelec was, that's another work. You are multiplying our work. We this work with the vulnerable sectors. To them, it is something new, an additional burden. But it is because of making efforts to make them friends, part of your family, that they uh, express their support to this undertaking. So I think unless there is friendship between these two groups, a sense of humility on the part of the government office, a sense of humility and understanding and sensitivity, unless these elements are present, I think this inclusive activity will never succeed. So passion, commitment, and dedication from NGOs and DPOs plus understanding humility on the part of the government, I think we can work miracles to make elections more inclusive and more rights-based. Thank you. Uh, pa Arif, you want to add something? <laughs> I, I want to add one point more. Uh, patience, commitment, dedication, and one more, and this is, according to me, this is the most important thing, regulations. Because if there is no political will from our uh, parliament, no, we can't do anything. So regulation is the most important thing. Justicia, if I may add yes. one Please. more element. I think we should not forget also that in our work, we were praying also, praying to Allah, praying yes. to yes. God, yes. no? That's why our meetings in the interagency and in the commission, we start with a prayer, acknowledging the role of Allah, the role of God in all these undertakings. Uh, thank you for all the speakers for this uh, great and interesting session. And that concludes our session. Let us uh, give a big applause again for the speakers. Thank you very much for participation in this plenary. Thank you so much, Ms. Justitia Arif. And also thank you to our distinguished speakers for enlightening us with your knowledge and also sharing your experiences. And now, again, we will present some tokens of appreciation to our speakers, presented by Ms. Justitia Arif. The first one will be... The first will, will be for... The Honorable Mr. Arif Budiman, Commissioner of Indonesia Election Commission, the KPU.
Thank you. And next, we invite Ms. Su Yun Kim, Director of the International Cooperation Division, the National Election Commission of the Republic of Korea, to receive a token of appreciation. And also our appreciation to Mr. René Vergara Samiento, for Commissioner of the Philippines Commission on Elections. And our group photo. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats.